of, of counter pick support on five for red side in oh, LCS. Yeah. I love that. So do you think that is like the correct meta? Do you think it's actually more important to have that winning bot lane, have that support counter pick than it is for soul lanes? Uh, I think, I don't know if it's correct. I prefer it for sure. <laughs> uh, I like to okay. win my 2v2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if it's yeah. good or not. I mean, like top lane can play, you know, Rexton versus Cassante for like that the third time. Matter. We're I talking about really <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I think I think sub five P is definitely valuable. Just uh, depending on how much you pinch support in like the one two three, like this game, I think definitely um, if you go to support five P, it could be pretty valuable because like the best lines might already be gone. Well, we've got an instant lock in on that Tristana first pick of the draft for Evil Geniuses. We've seen this in mid lane plenty recently. Hundred Thieves are going to respond. They go for the Sejuani and they pick Azir for Quid. He's been playing a lot of this so far. He got a good win on it yesterday when they went up against FlyQuest, shuffling Vikla's Tristana back into the turret, making a mm -hmm. fool out of him there a little bit. Hoping to do that again here to Jojo Pin today. That's yeah, his fifth game of Azir uh, in just eight games. Well, I guess this would be yeah going into his eighth game. So has been playing a tremendous amount of it. Ivern coming out again. Ivern, I feel like, is actually really strong on this patch. There's not that many different junglers that are playing it, uh, but it does feel like the ones who have put the time in are getting a lot of value from it. Yeah, I think Ivern's just annoying because you're essentially just running a 6v5 for a long time. And so many people forget <laughs> to, like, hit Daisy. Like, there's always, like, the calm where it's like, someone just killed this Daisy. It's really annoying. And then, like, finally when you realize it, it's not that annoying. But, uh, yeah, it's a strong pick for sure in general. Have you have you experimented at all with uh, Ivern support? Because I know some people were talking about, like, flexes potentially yeah, for I've, Ivern support. I've heard rumors that some people have touched it. Uh, I can say that that's not my style. That's not you. You're not an Ivern kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, I think you should always be open to any possibility, but I'm not sold right now. <laughs> hey, I can respect that. We can Sometimes... have a 3v2. It's like you're ganking bot permanently with Daisy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just camp around in the brush, you know? You just Try get away. to like level six before you have Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, well, that, that is a little, that's throwing some wrench in the gears. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we have Twitch Chat's current favorite champion locked in here as the third pick of the draft for 100 Thieves. The Cassante with the Azir already locked in. There's not really a whole lot of flex still available for him no. in the draft, so someday he'll be piloting that one there into the top lane. Desynced roles drafted in the first three picks here for both teams, so we'll see what they want to target here in the second half with the bans. Plenty of different things targeted in the first half. Zaya is one of those champs that's currently sitting at the top of the tier list on 13.13. .13. Made it all the way through the first half of the draft. Honestly, neither team picking a marksman in the first half except for the Trist, which we expect yeah. to be mid, so I wouldn't be too surprised to see some focus on that pool here in the second four bans. Yeah, there is obviously some potential that it could be flexed down towards bot, but you're definitely expecting Trist to go mid. 100 Thieves feels like they're playing what has kind of become standard to them. It just feels like this team plays to scale. They look for 5v5 comps. You know, they're playing pretty stock standard stuff over their kind of good streak here. Uh, if you're thinking about, you know, bot lane from this position, obviously EG is already locking their support. 100 Thieves has nothing. You know, what kind of picks are you thinking about given what we've seen so far in the draft? I mean, I think that the three best ADCs left right now are definitely Aphelios, Jinx, and Varus. So it's just picking your poison. I mean, I think Double Lift um, has a proficiency to tend towards Jinx. So I wouldn't be surprised by Jinx on four, but I mean, Aphelios and Varus are always an option, but I think, yeah, I, I, I expect Jinx on four. It also fits the theme of their comp pretty well. You know, that is something that they, they have been liking to play. Uh, Double historically obviously has played a lot of Jinx. He hasn't played it yet this split, uh, but it will be interesting to see if he brings it out. And I like the Gwen ban here from 100 Thieves. They're saying, hey, we already picked our top laner in the Cassante. We're showing you with the Azir that it's not a flex. Gwen is typically one of the picks that people like taking into this if they want to be aggressive in the matchup. We know Revenge is the type of player who doesn't want to shy away from something like that. Varus banned out here from EG. So we'll see, do we get the Jinx? The Aphelio is one of those picks that we were expecting here for the AD carry position from Doublelift. Or, okay, they're going to give him last pick of the draft. Just go ahead, lock in the Alistar instead. A very typical counter pick towards the Rel there in the support role. Doublelift actually looked completely perplexed when the Varus got banned out. I wonder if they yeah. weren't expecting that to happen and he was going to actually take it on force. So they need to buy more time. I think what? that might have been the case for sure, yeah. That's I mean, what it looked like to me. I'm so surprised that they went Alistar here because there is a small chance that they just pit Tristvon and then they could Silas the uh, Alistar, which could be pretty scary. Um, but I don't know, maybe they're just gambling against that. Well, Silas was banned. Third, oh, never mind. Third, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Third there in the yeah, first yeah, yeah. half for 100 Thieves because they did not want to allow that one through even that early. But it will be the Fiora locked in. The Gwen was banned away, so Revenge is going to go for one of those other matchups that can really put some of the pressure on Cassante, burst through some of that tankiness he likes to build. That'll be the top lane answer here for Evil Geniuses. But what is the last pick of the draft? What do we want to take into this bot lane matchup, or are we going to switch it up and put Triss down there instead? No, Aphelios locked in front for Aphelios him. Jinx. 5P, both ADCs, nice. <laughs> Let's see it. Oh my God, it's the red side. It's counter. like this guy is a pro <laughs> League of Legends Jinx. player. <laughs>
<laughs> Jinx from Arcane. <laughs> Bat chest. Well, hold on. They, they got to, still got 10 more seconds. It Maybe does always look the... really, really funny when you're yeah. on red side and this is your fifth pick. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, like, it's all come down to this, boys. This is what we've earned with ourselves. <laughs> yeah. What's I mean, it going to be? It definitely is the best in slot. It's just funny to see. Like, I, yeah, I, I like to give uh, Turtles some. Yeah, I'd, I'd just be annoying if he ever gets 5 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think then it was a, a mistake potentially? You know, is there a support like, given that we now know it is Relifelio spot lane, is there a different support you would have wanted to play in Busio's situation? You know, if they just took Jinx uh, on four. I think All Star is good there. I think the uh, the weird thing for EG's draft is that they broke the flex on Rel because I know a lot of teams can play like Trist Rel. Rel you don't jungle. know if it's yeah, you don't know if it's mid jungle or bot lane. And so then, but now since they are, already had a uh, Ivern, you can just pick All Star knowing that that's the support matchup. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it was a good draft overall. Uh, like a good answer by 100 Thieves. Which side would you rather play? Uh, you go first. <laughs> I go first? Yeah. You're the pro player. We're asking you. I know what I'd like to play. I suck, so I'd rather play 100 Thieves side. I feel like their comp's a lot easier to act side lane. We saw TL do this. They actually lost that game, but where Summit was playing Fiora, yeah. and Piotr was up towards top on the Sejuani constantly and was actually getting dives, and they were putting Summit in a position where he could actually then take over the game. Yeah. I feel like if you don't put that pressure on and Cassante can stabilize, and the Fiora is just forced into 5v5, then I feel like it becomes really hard for Fiora to kind of find the same success. Yeah, and Fiora had such a lead that game too. I was surprised yeah. that they really couldn't pull that off. But uh, yeah, I mean, Fiora is really annoying, especially level one. I know. I mean, like so many junglers just get harassed out of their red buff. Yep. All right, talking about level ones, you can see EG grouping up together as they go into this top side river, but they aren't going to try to make any super aggressive plays. Worth pointing out, we have mirrored summoner spells in the bottom lane, both AD carries opting for the cleanse, both being immobile on their own, recognizing that there's plenty of CC on the other side to be able to lock them down. They want that get out of jail free card. Meanwhile, with engaged supports coming back into the meta a little bit more, we're seeing more of these ignites being taken. I'm always a fan of that. I love seeing supports be able to roam around the map, affect the other lanes yeah. and get some kills going earlier on. Yeah, I mean, I love that too. Oh. I mean, lane for us. Oh, let's see. Blister is actually leaving his camp potentially here to get a little bit of grass. Okay, one auto attack. It's just Fiora being annoying. Yeah. All right, I was hoping we would get a little bit more than that out of the whole thing, but all right, Revenge will just back away from that one. And all right, there we go. Closer starting off at his red. You can see Armeo starting off at his own blue. Of course, the Ivern clear different from all the other jungle clears just because of the way that you have to go about it with planting the groves, coming back, harvesting them later. But looking up here at this top side, normally we don't spend a lot of time watching top lane simply because most of the action is focused elsewhere in the current metagame of League of Legends. But whenever Fiora is in the game, you always have to pay a little bit more attention to how that 1v1 is going and make sure she doesn't get to that point where she can turn it into a side lane split push type of match. Yeah, I mean, Chime talked about how annoying Fiora is at level 1 for junglers. Also pretty annoying for top laners. <laughs> yeah, uh, every time grass is up, you get queued, and there's not really a lot you can do about it. He has like 50 HP level yep, up. Pretty yep, cool. it's definitely really, really strong. So Cassante going to have a bit of an experience up there on that top side. Uh, talk us through the, this bot lane matchup a lot. Obviously, we've been seeing a tremendous amount of Alistar into Rel. You know, the general principle everyone always talks about is just being able to interrupt the Rel combo. You know, that's yeah. really simple to do. Um, but is there anything more than that? You know, are you really just looking to play that defensive side as the Alistar? Uh, I think the matchup's changed since the Rel rework because, I mean, old counter, like the old matchup, how it went. Oh. Nice. Flash from Unforgiven, having to get himself back away. And now Busio's in danger with Ayla crashing down on top of the 100 Thieves support. It's Busio who ends up worse for wear in terms of health, but Unforgiven's flash being gone means 100 Thieves could be set up for a follow up play here soon. Yeah, I think that's huge because Elsar will heal it up with his passives too. So I, I, th I think they're in such a good condition with their way of pushing. Um, I, I think I think if Sejuani can, she can maybe sprint down here, but I think they might also just bluff, and Ivern has to cover this dive out of fear. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, th I think how the old matchup works. Um, what's called? Rel could always cancel Alistar's combo, but now that's not long, no longer an option unless he's actually going on the Rel, at which point she can just Q, and then like she'll get knocked out and stun him at the same time. So I think I think the interaction's a lot different. I think Alistar's are definitely like a favorable matchup. Yeah, but Rel's just being really able strong. to cancel Rel's combo. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, yeah, Rel looks so sad when she can't get her full combo up. <laughs> She's such a monster when it does land, though. I feel like this champion's playmaking capabilities in plenty of games that we've seen so far this week and also in a previous week of the LCS, just team fights being won off of Rel engages or counter engages. Yeah. It just seems like such a powerful pick right now for teams that do have the cohesion and the communication to fire off everything at that exact moment where Rel says, okay, let's go in. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think uh, like the, the combo has changed too. Like everyone usually just flash flash WRs now, but you can also like lead with Q flash. Yeah. And if they don't have cleanse, they're just stuck for like, you know, 
three seconds maybe. The crash down is pretty much guaranteed at that point. Yeah, and yeah. I do think that combo is really strong. Yeah. I'm surprised we haven't seen it more, honestly, because I feel like every rel I've seen so far, it's always just like flash W hard and then Q to delay the CC longer. But yeah, the Q flash, I feel like in LCS, we're only seeing when it's like smaller scale engagements, when it's like actually engaging in a 2v2 or yeah. something like that. Um, but are you talking about you'd rather see that in 5v5 as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it has its place in 5v5. But um, I mean, honestly, you have a few like carries stuff like clumped up together. Maybe one of them is going to mess it up, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Armeo versus Closer fighting over the chicken camp here. Closer does not want to allow Armeo to plant that grove. He does have to smite up to be able to find the instant harvest. Meanwhile, Quid still under pressure from JoJo's explosive shots. Back underneath that mid lane tier one turret. Closer still battling over the chickens there. Armeo's not going to get a whole lot more, but the wave has crashed in here in mid. Closer was not able to provide any sort of protection for that being in his own 1v1 off to the side. And JoJo just wants to keep this pressure on. Again, want to comment on how much of a resurgence JoJo has had so far here in summer compared to spring, but I don't have the time because Ayla's in trouble here in bottom lane and he has to flash over the wall to stay alive. Closer making his way down here means the EG duo has to retreat. Yeah, with Closer here, they might just have to straight up leave potentially. We'll see. I mean, Ayla's going to go back to base. Abusio and Doublelift have definitely been getting the better end of this matchup. They already forced Flash off Unforgiven. They forced the Flash off Ayla as well. You know, is this a matchup that you think they should be able to create these advantages or are these, you know, EG mistakes or potentially 100 Thieves just outplays? I think all of this just leads off of Alistar taking Phyllis' Flash so early because he doesn't want to step really far out or he's just going to get brought away. Oh, some days all out. Revenge is in some trouble here. He does not have an ultimate. And Cassante just gave Fiora the top lane solo experience. Wow, that is a disaster for Revenge. You're going Fiora for this matchup to win the lane, to be able to create pressure, to have first move. Cassante getting that early first blood, 1v1 solo kill, and he got his flash yeah. is just a disaster. Uh, because that's going to put Cassante in a place where you can stabilize very easily against this Fiora. Man. That is rough. Someday just immediately taking advantage of the level six versus level five power spike going all out. Let's take another look at how it happens here as he'll hit level six when the minion dies. Yeah, I think Revenge just hadn't really tracked exactly where he was. And that was really well played by Someday on that last minion that's going to hit six. He buffers his W, uses the, the W to actually hit Revenge and kill off that minion, gets six immediately, has him set up for the all out. Really well played. Jojo gets scooped under the tower, is able to get out though. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens at the Rift Child fight now, because Fjord is so vulnerable in the in the Rift Child. I think that um, that can really bleed it. I think that's like the biggest crossover from that 1v1. Ayla walking with Armeo and Jojo through this bot side river. Busio knows what's going on, but of course there's no opportunity to interfere with any of it here just yet. Back to Jojo though, since we see him playing this aggressive underneath the enemy tier one turret, <laughs> I just feel like he's such a different player now in summer compared to spring. He feels much more like Jojo from last year where he showed up and was just playing so aggressively in lane, always skill checking all of his opponents. In spring, it felt like he lost some of that magic, but he's really come back with a vengeance here in summer, I feel. Absolutely. I mean, I think he's been looking really, really good. I will say he's, he's definitely better than he was in his rookie year too, though, right? Like he, he is playing that level of aggression, but um, I think he's having less mistakes, which is something that is really, really big because that has always been the kind of double-edged sword of the most aggressive players is that you can have these incredible plays, but if you're getting picked off all the time. Well, it, it doesn't always get you the leads you want. Yeah, and I was surprised too, because he played with Inspired for so long and that was such like a strong mid jungle 2v2, but he, he like really just bounced back hard when in like a split where you could have easily just fallen off. So yeah. I think it's really impressive. I mean, that's kind of the expectation that most people had for EG was the roster blew up. This team's going to be at the bottom of the standings, right? Yeah. Four to five members have, have left including Inspired, who was an MVP in multiple leagues, playing with JoJo, you're thinking, all right, well, that pairing's gone. He's not going to look as good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm excited to see how this Rift Herald pans out, though, because both bot lanes, or at least both supports, are going to be running mid here, contesting, and uh, Fiora is pretty vulnerable. What are you looking for as a support heading towards this matchup, then? Like, you know, when you're when you're trying to play around Herald, you know, let's put you in the shoes of Busio. Like, I, what are you trying to accomplish in this fight? I think you're just trying to eat level six. I don't know how close both supports are, but generally, if you track your XP well enough on support, you can He's get level six on this half, time. Right? Halfway to, uh, to six, halfway okay. through five. And Ayla is the same. They're both 50% through. They bought 20 pinboards. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks like there's no contest coming out here from 100 Thieves. So this one, unfortunately, the fight we were looking forward to fizzles out, and there's no PvP at all here for this, as Evil Geniuses will pick it up. They're still down 0-1 to one on kills, but they're ahead in gold. Even more going into their pockets now with that Herald being picked up. Busio and Closer walking through the enemy jungle here. The Sejuani ulti is available, but remember that it's also Armeo who still has the level advantage here in the jungle matchup. Busio knocking Ayla back on the other side of the red buff wall as Jojo goes in after Quid, sets off that explosive 
active charge. Closer charging over the wall with Arctic Assault as Jojo keeps going for the auto attacks. The ulti from Sejuani doesn't do anything because there's no follow-up from the rest of 100 Thieves. Daisy's still pretty low HP, but gonna keep leading the charge. Smite guarantees they're able to knock her down. Ayla goes in for the crash down and finds two. Closer's immediately blown up, and now Busio's tanking everybody with no Alistar ulti on the menu just yet. Unforgiven picks up the kill on him, and it's 2 nothing for EG in the fight. Nicely done by EG. Uh, moving down, catching 100 Thieves, trying to play around in the enemy jungle. Are able to punish them pretty heavily. Daisy even did make a pretty big difference in that fight. Yes, they were able to kill it off, but it actually tanked up so much damage. Uh, Jojo was able to push out Quid early on. And as soon as Closer had no flash, you know, from trying to get out of the pit, they just go in. Ayla has a great engage. I believe that was the QW engage yeah. you're talking about. Uh, and Closer, nowhere to go, gets finished off by Jojo. I mean, I think the idea behind 100 Thieves is like attempt to block them from getting back to bot lane because Jinx ate two mm -hmm. plates and then they're also losing a wave. So they just wanted to slow EG to get to bot lane so that they got more out of the Rift Herald trade. But they gave them, or EG just got like a good fight out of the situation. So I mean, good good awareness from uh, Ayla to see that angle. And it does feel like a lot of it is, is just kind of around mid pile, right? Like as soon as the Azir gets pushed off, I think the fight becomes pretty difficult when the Azir is just kind of sent running down the river. And Jojo's back with his team a lot more quickly. Uh, Quid was pretty separated and Quid has been getting bullied relatively heavily in mid lane. And now Shiv is done. Jojo was sitting on a tremendous amount of gold. So has the early Shiv and the wave clear is really going to ramp up. It's super nice with Triss because even with the nerfs, even if you don't one shot backline, one auto then kills the backline with the explosive shot. So yeah. it's like you are perma stuck under your tower. And this is why just on a mid can feel really, really oppressive from ahead. Um, but it's also why it's like super garbage from behind. You know, and we've seen kind of both sides of that. Like yeah. it adds no utility. So you have to dominate the matchup. And I feel like you have to be having this wave permanently at your opponent's tower. Yeah, I know earlier today too, we saw the Tristana rush a Vamp Scepter in the matchup, I think versus LeBlanc, mm -hmm. which really slowed down her her first core, I think, which was Kraken in, the, in that game. But I, I know that like certain matchups uh, in mid, she can also get like pretty heavily poked. Yep. Yeah, it's always interesting, right? Because it, it's one of those things where it's like, Vamp can help you if you're already kind of like playing from a point of power and you can shut off some of that poke. But if you're behind and you have Vamp, then you're slowing down your first core yeah. and you're not able to sustain through the poke anyway. So then you can kind of get in this loose lose situation where you're really weak. Uh, but EG are going to be starting up this dragon. First one went to 100 Thieves. So both teams are hovering, but 100 Thieves seems a little bit trepidatious to start it off. There is a TP available for Cassante, but not for Fiora. The fight's already started. Devil is going to have the first kill, but Jojo barely gets away. Quinn takes out Ayla. Jojo still trying to hobble it off. 100 HP remains, and now it's cut down. 100 Thieves just struck gold. Nicely done. 100 Thieves looking to chase for more as well. Unforgiven does have Flash Cleanse. Looks like he's going to be able to walk it out. And they do lose the dragon, but they get the fight afterwards. It was a great engage from Busio you know, over the wall. And the timing was perfect for 100 Thieves because the teleport for Fiora just now came up. That champion does not have the ability to interrupt the TP from the Cassante. Armeo just picks up a freebie on Quid. I don't really know what Azir was doing right there. But man, that team fight was what 100 Thieves needed to make sure they stayed in the game. And Doublelift is getting paid. I mean, he's gotten already a lot of plates. You talked about the plates that he was able to actually get for free when EG moved up towards the Herald. He picks up a kill now, or excuse me, another assist. He gets his Kraken Slayer. He's got 500 gold ahead of where Unforgiven is. We can see it one more time. Busio just found a really good angle here. They should have known he's there because yeah, they have right. the sweeper, but he gets the hack splash over the wall and has a perfect engage. I think it's a pretty bad mistake by uh, EG to not break that blast cone at least. Because even though he hack splashed over, he could easily just take the blast cone and they yep. see him the entire time. Somebody needs to mark him or like prevent that angle. Whose role do you think that should have been? Is that the Rel that's trying to get in between? Or who's who's actually... Yeah, I think Rel can for sure, or if they find a good angle first. Yep. They just didn't see an angle fast enough. Wow. Ivern. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately for Quid, he didn't know that there was a ward in the brush, so he couldn't try to juke away there. And yeah. it just makes easy money for our nail. He need Daisy that time. It was just... <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Even though, like, I've heard some damage now, but I swear, even when, when Daisy was gig OP, it's, you just feel stupid dying to that champion. Yeah, it's so annoying. And she, she always, like, just tethers you to, to you. Like, especially as support, yeah. you're trying to make space for your team, and then Daisy's just slapping you. And I'm like, well, I can't hit it. <laughs> My auto attacks do 40 here, guys. It's got 3,000 <laughs> HP. Yeah. I'm going to need some help. I like uh, what 100 Thieves is doing with this bout side control right now, Turn though. Lots of... Uh, oh, just kidding. Run. Attempts. Trying to move in here, get some vision down in the enemy jungle. Busio looking for anything, but Ayla finds him out, forces him back. Should be able to take down this control ward here, sit down some vision of his own. A little bit of warts from the side of EG here in the bot side jungle for 100 Thieves. You can see they're on top of where the blue buff would have been, just trying to keep track of those movements from 100 Thieves back and forth between the mid and bottom lanes. 
Someday and Revenge still scrapping back and forth up here. Even though things went well for Someday early on, Revenge is still doing fine in the farm department, but now Quid's the one in some trouble. Here comes the Daisy Dive. As Quid gets away, JoJo's ready to rocket jump forward. Closer coming over the wall, trying to provide some covering fire here for his mid laner. The Emperor's Divide buys a moment more, but Quid still falls, and JoJo picks up the money. EG brings more guys. They're ready to keep this fight going as oh. Closer. Oh. One more hit will take him down, and Unforgiven gets it done. 200 years, baby. Unforgiven and making it happen gets a kill there. I got to say, Quid? I held his ulti way too long. Like, he could have just early ulted on, on the rails engage, and I feel like he just kind of walks out of there, but potentially was, was nervous about him flashing over the wall or something, but he held it so long, and then when he gets engaged on, he does finally get away. He stays around too long, gets hit by the Ivern Q. It's yeah. kind of a, a needless death. Yeah, I think he just chose not to play the mind game of like trying to find out when Rel flashes to the point where he just lost all his HP. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I think that was really nice. The feels combo, though. Really nice. Three and a half thousand gold lead now for Evil Geniuses, up over 100 thieves on that one. What I was commenting on right before that fight started was Revenge, even though he dropped early, now up back to a good lane state here in the 1v1 against the Cassante. And you can see one more time how Quid got away for a while, but not all the way. Well, and a lot of that reason that he is having that massive CS advantage as we're gonna watch Quid die is because somebody actually TP'd the Dragon and he stayed top, right? Because his TP wasn't on cooldown, so he was able to actually stay up towards that top side. Uh, we do see this was the final play there. Unforgiven getting a kill, but he's now taking the turret. So you know, even though somebody did go down and help his team in that fight, it's like, was it even really worth it? Because he's now fallen down 40 CS in the matchup. He lost his top tower off of this. Uh, as Fiora, anytime you get alone time, you're going to crush turrets. So EG 4K ahead now, and it is going to be a pretty difficult situation. It feels like, honestly, a lot of 100 Thieves games when they're losing fall into this spot where you're kind of looking around, and the only person who has any gold is Double Lift. Yeah. And you're kind of saying, well, how do we how do we play here, right? Because yeah. if there's only the one threat, it's tough. I mean, they drafted for the double threat, you know, like Azir Jinx backline comp, but yeah, I mean, they, EG has done a really good job of shutting Azir out of this game. And I think Quid, like, I'm never a fan of this where, you know, you don't just quite have enough money for your Mythic, and then you start buying other components, and you're pushing your Mythic further and further and further back, because he had the pieces for his Leandries, then he didn't have enough money, so he actually just goes, buys a Blasting Wand, so now he has a Blasting Wand, then he didn't have enough money again, so then he goes and he buys Sork Boots, and it's like, now you're not even on, on one item here, yeah. so late on into the game, that it's like, you're pushing back your power further and further and further and further. I mean, your team clear, like, clicks tab, and they're like, okay, can we contest this dragon? Oh, no, like, you look, you see Trisana had Shiv plus, like, a or whatever and you're, you're looking at like the fire sale that Azir has it's definitely disheartening well it looks like 100 thieves are still ready to fight for this this time around it's both top laners coming in with a tp full 5v5 inbound as the drake stays at about half hp we're ready to smite fight over this one azela goes for the engage magnet storm on to two drake still alive stuns back onto the carries of eg as closer cleans up Ayla. and 100 thieves is pushing it forward the drake goes over to 100 as well and that fight's gonna be there that's massive being able to win that fight from that far down a little bit forward and he just kind of got exploded. Revenge was trying to find an angle, but couldn't really get that involved in the fight. And the 100 Thieves carries were kept really safe. Yeah, that was a nice uh, play also, I think by Busio because Rel dives in, but then Alistar just punts out the um, Aphelios and he can't do any follow damage. Then he gets a double Q on their two other DPS and Rel's just getting destroyed while no one on their team can do any damage. Yeah, that was really nicely done. Jojo though, TP's in. Double is looking like he could be dead. Yeah, there's no way out of that one. He's in the middle of a marksman sandwich and he ain't finding no way home except a respawn platform. Easy money there from EG. Nice teleport from Jojo. Yeah, I'm proud of uh, Jinx for not using her flash there though. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's good yeah. though. Like you're looking at it and you're like, okay, I mean, so many AD series with just like panic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you would have died for sure. I don't even think Jojo had used Rocket Jump, right? Like, yeah. He just walked up. Jojo, though, uh, oh, probably getting another freebie. There's no ulti on Busio. And Jojo's on two items now before Busio, or excuse me, before Quid has even completed one, right? So, like, the second item is completed now. He's got the Navori Quick Blades. He has the Shiv. Jojo is ridiculously strong at this point. Unforgiven as well, you know, with the extra gold that he's picked up. He's got 2,000 in pocket, and he's already sitting on the Noon Quiver. So, he basically has another item completed as well. Like, both their cores. They're gonna have double marksman with two items. No, but look, they have sork boots and they have the uh, normal boots. <laughs> True. He can right. walk faster. Yeah. He simply has Quid's better shoes. Quid's got his Nikes on. And yeah. JoJo's got some brown bags. I mean, come on. 
I mean, this is a 6,000 gold lead for Evil Geniuses. Normally, you look at a game of League of Legends that's 18 minutes in and the kill score is 7 to 4. You don't think that the gold itself is going to be that far apart. But when we look at the farm, Isaac, you mentioned the costs of Someday joining the fights earlier compared to Revenge staying in the side lane. That's a plus 45 CS lead there in yeah. the top lane. Jungle relatively even. It's plus 50 in mid as Jojo has been just keeping Quid stuck underneath the tier 1 turret the entirety of these first 19 minutes of the game. You mentioned how Tristana has to play aggressively for this pick to look good in mid lane, and Jojo is making Quid sweat in this one. I mean, Jojo's 26, 2700 gold ahead in mid lane, just in their isolated matchup. Like, that is a ridiculous lead, and uh, Revenge putting a lot of pressure on Sunday. Won't be able to kill him just yet, but I mean, despite the fact that Doublelift is in a pretty good spot, he's still 1k behind in his individual matchup, and he's the richest member on his team, right? Like, yeah. Quid is completely out of the game, so it's really all up to Jinx. And that's going to make it really, really difficult because you have to create space for Jinx. You have to have a perfect fight for Dublin. I feel like for 100 Thieves to have any sort of chance. And right now, the fights are going only the way of evil geniuses. They use the Herald to knock down the tier 2 turret in mid. They're going to get so much extra gold value out of that considering the inflated value of those turrets compared to others on the map. It's not even 20 minutes into the game, and they're up 6.7 thousand gold over 100 Thieves. EG looking great here. The Ivern now with two fully completed items as well. They've got the Shirelias. They've got the Ardent Sensor, and that feels even better when you got two Marksmen instead of one. Yeah, double AD carry and uh, Ardent Sensor is really strong here. So what's the play then? Sean, I'm going to ask you, if you're in this spot as 100 Thieves, you know, you're on a playmaking support, so you can find an engage angle if given the opportunity, but how do you try to stabilize this game? How do you get back in? I mean, yeah, you have to hold defensive vision around Baron for a long time, and you're just looking for an angle where you can get like a flank or a pocket, like a hole in their vision somewhere, where you can get a really good start as All-Star. Okay. Um, I, th I think that's your best play at this point, but EG's done a really good job with warding. I mean, Armeo and Ayla's synergy from Academy has really, you know, crossed over. And like they always have a ward behind them on mid here. They have a ward still in their and they're in their top side. Like obviously it's gonna be harder for Hunted Thieves because they're using like they're playing the game with less resources. But right. yeah, EG's vision game has been pretty solid here. Um, uh, yeah, I mean Alistar needs to just find like a, uh, a pretty good flank here. I know Closer does a good job of sneaking between mid waves too to find flanks. Halo is ready to lead the charge here as Hundred Thieves goes for the tier one turret, but they're gonna be forced Revenge off behind before they them. complete the job. Revenge ready to collapse. He wants double lift or quit the magnet storm under the carries of Hundred Thieves and Double Lift is already down. Quinn follows right after, and Bucio's the cherry on top. Some days going nowhere, and Evil Geniuses just racked up four more bodies. AG slam under Thieves by the Baron, and they're going to get a freebie right after it. No way Closer can get over here to actually stop this, as he's been spotted out by Ayla. You get four kills, you get the Baron. It's going to be a 10k gold lead at 21 minutes, and now I think the only angle for 100 Thieves is going next. Yeah, I think I think Fiora was honestly like a human ward there for yep. Ralph to set up like a good engage. Could she <laughs> yeah. just standing here being patient, like, hey, they're right here, and then boom. Yeah, that was beautifully done there by Revenge. And yes, he does get his ear shuffled away, but he's still in range of double if he was still hitting him from the other side of the wall. The carries go down immediately, so there's no recourse for the rest of the members of Hundred Thieves. The gold lead, even just during that replay, went up another 1k or so as they had actually taken down the top tier 2. They're pilfering all the jungle camps down on bot side. They're taking away the dragon. EG has gotten everything. Man, I'm glad I asked about ways to try to get back into the game before that sequence of plays, because I think you hit the nail on the head, Azale. It's just a go next now. JoJo's farming these guys up for extra money. Easier to kill the Azir than the cannon minion at this point. And EG's going to mount the multiple lane assault. It's Unforgiven and Armeo pushing up mid. JoJo and Ayla pushing up bot. Revenge taking a casual stroll through the middle of the map to get up and get that My third God. lane moving there in top side as they'll just continue to put the hurt on the base of 100 Thieves. Someday he'll try to defend that mid lane tier three, but there's no defending this. Busio down to 200 HP. One more auto would have finished him off. They won't quite get the damage as Ayla tries to get away there with a the crash down. Nice stopwatch to escape the Super Mega Death Rocket as the explosive charge on Closer. It'll be enough thanks to the Gale Force of Unforgiven providing the assist. Oh, oh. Double if dies, Someday dies. There's nothing left here for 100 Thieves. EG's gonna end this one nice and quickly. They'll force their way through all three inhibitor turrets, all three inhibitors. They wanna make sure this one hurts for 100 Thieves. Quid and Busio still standing, but now it's a five-man push from the number one team in the LCS, and they're ready to keep that spot. 
There goes Busio. Quinn's gonna try to survive on the fountain, but it's about the best he can do as Evil Genius is 16 to four. Not even 24 minutes into the game, will stop the 100 Thieves win streak and take the victory. Man, you know that game is over when the AD carry is flanking you on your inhibitor tower. Unforgiven is behind him. 100 Thieves are getting closed in from all sides. And this one was domination from EG. Uh, they got way ahead early through mid jungle, it felt like. And JoJo was way, way ahead of the pace of the game for a long, long time. Uh, bot lane was not actually going well for 100 Thieves early. You know, there, there was, or excuse me, bot lane was going well for 100 Thieves early, but EG just felt like they took control and they didn't really let go of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, JoJo popping off in the mid lane matchup, dominating that one from start to finish. Armeo was always ahead of closer when you looked at levels, when you looked